One of the more interesting rookies that's going a little bit under the radar, if you ask me, in terms of his production and his impact is Jaquan Brisker of the Chicago Bears, 48th pick uh, in the second round. I think he's got 25 overall tackles, two sacks, one fumble recovered in the 49ers game. I'll show you that play, and I'm not sure how he doesn't get credit for the fumble, uh, force fumble as well. Really great against the run. And, and I think underrated against the pass, to be honest with you. I've seen him used in multiple alignments as a safety. I've seen him you know, rolled up as a oh, what's called an overhang or a st- outside linebacker, essentially a strong safety rolled up in the box. I will be honest with you, to a certain extent, some of his production and his play has caught me a little bit by surprise. I watched uh, three of his games at Penn State from last year. And it, first of all, the athleticism jumped out. There was ball skills displayed, ability to break on the ball, coverage. There, you know, everything was there athletically. Uh, there was a little bit of an issue, if you ask me, with pre-snap alignment and and stance. And now sometimes, you know, you're lined up as a half-field safety, you're lined up in the box, and then you're rolling or shifting because you're trying to create some indecision in the quarterback's mind if you think it's a pass play. So there's movement pre-snap or post-snap that we don't know about because we don't know the coverage call. But this was a consistent inability to get in a good stance and and have – consistent eye discipline and that was you know across multiple games and I wasn't the only one that that noticed it and he he does not show those problems at all for the Bears you know if they were problems if you believe what I'm saying they are absolutely fixed maybe it was a situation where he had um he did not like the particular aspect or the scheme that he was doing for the game plan and the games that I, and a couple of games I watched but everything the Bears have him doing he's comfortable everything the Bears have him doing he's reacting immediately and if, if it requires him to do so, he's triggered by run reads. If it requires him to slow play it, like an RPO, where he wants to kind of force the quarterback to hold onto the ball a little longer and let the D, D line pass rush get there, he's doing a great job in every situation. I'm a huge fan of him. I think I've got 15 plays for you. They're kind of packaged in terms of his big plays first, and then they kind of generally settle into run plays and then pass plays thereafter. He's playing as an overhang defender. So what I mean by overhang defender is instead of having a too high safety structure, all they've done is think of a rope. If you pull the end of a rope, the entire rope's going to move. So the one safety is just rolled over to center field, and then the other half field safety, which let's presume it's brisker, is just rolled up. So when we say overhang, we're generally talking about two by two or maybe three by three off the tight end. In this case, it's the tight end to the field. He's getting run action away from him. All these other guys are committed to the run action, right? Why? Why can you do that? Because you have someone on the backside who's dedicated to the boot. And in this case, he gets a sack. Like I said, I think he's got two sacks on the year. Sacking Daniel Jones is a pretty significant thing, if you ask me. He's an athlete. I know he had he's had ankle injuries in at least two games this year. A brisker up top here, half field safety against the 49ers early in this, earlier in the season. Again, he's triggered by things, and what I mean by triggered is he'll see the read and go, but he waits. This is, this is perfect. He's sitting here waiting to see what happened because there is a mesh between the quarterback and Debo Samuel, so the quarterback could keep it and go opposite. Quarterback could keep it, and maybe Debo Samuel runs out here, and it's, and it's a pass play. So Brisker's just waiting to identify that and recognize it. Once he does, boom, he's triggered. He's gone. This is Debo. I don't know how he doesn't get – I guess they credit this – the. Force fumble for Raekwon Smith here. I think I'm going to give you the end zone angle next. But in any case, it is a fumble, and then Jaquan Brisker dives on it. If you guys didn't see it well there, or if I played the video too quick, you'll see it from the end zone angle, hopefully. Brisker is down here. Like I said, he's the safety to the field. And there's the mesh with Trey Lance and Debo Samuel. To me, that looks like it should be a forced fumble for for Jaquan Brisker. You guys let me know what you think. Maybe this other outside player uh, slapping down, maybe he's the guy that initially slaps the ball loose. Yeah, I guess I see it now. But it still looks like, to me, Brisker is the guy who pushes it out. Maybe I'm wrong, but he's definitely the guy who recovered it. So in terms of statistical impact, 25 tackles, two sacks, a fumble recovered, you know, potentially a forced fumble there, you know, regard, you know, depending on what you believe, uh, he's definitely having an impact for this team. And we know the Bears have a lot of young pieces, and they're struggling, you know, offensively. But I think there's some times where the defense is playing exceptional. And Jaquan Brisker, if you ask me, is leading the way, along with Roquan Smith, obviously. Watch him take on this tight end. This look, this kind of looks like an outside linebacker doing this. Shed the guy to the outside, and then step in, chest to chest. Well, not necessarily chest to chest, but you know, he's trying to get chest to chest and then drive him back. He's got some help there. Don't get me wrong, but. 
playing this perfectly, man. He's playing this way better than you would expect a rookie strong safety to play against an NFL tight end trying to base block him. That's my point. All right, he's in motion. He's going with the man in motion here, so he could have this tight end man-to-man, -man, and he's perfectly capable of covering tight ends man-to-man -man just because I'm showing you a lot of plays in the box. Like if you're going to try to – Put him in a in a box and say that's all he's capable of. You're wrong, man. And I don't just don't look at football that way. J. Cron Brisker looks like to me he's a guy who, if you give him seven different reads in a week, he's going to practice all seven of them and he's going to recognize them and be triggered, which means see my read and go. And and why am I mentioning that? If he hesitates at all, this potential down block by what looks like a receiver to me is going to be there. And when the running back bounces it. Jaquan Brisker is not going to be here to confront the running back. Jaquan Brisker is going to be getting pinned inside, and now it looks like to me you're going to have another DB isolated on the running back. As it is, because he's triggered, because he sees the read and he goes. He's decisive. He gets a chance to make a tackle for loss. I think he's playing great. Like, not good, great. Uh, it'll be probably a couple of weeks before we do a best – safety rookie safety in the nfl to be honest with you we're with the next one we're going to be on is who's the best rookie edge defender in the nfl that'll be next week hopefully monday or tuesday here's brisker at the top this is his second sack again it's against washington blindside blitz you have other pressure that's you know crossing wentz's face and you got another blitzing db inside here but brisker's off the edge screaming off the edge gets a solo sack i think he's playing fantastic you guys let me know in the comments section if you agree we've got about four more plays here i believe Brisker down here, another run play. This one's away from him. What I love about this is the athletic ability. It's other guys there, right, in terms of first contact. You have an inside linebacker making first contact here. But watch the hustle as we, as we pull this back. Watch what Brisker does, jumping over a tight end. This tight end's trying to do this cut block. We used to call it a shoe shine block. He's trying to dive at your shoes, you know, two to play side, to help you make you have to jump over him. But he's not blocking Brisker, but Brisker is dealing with the shoe shine block in the same way. And he has a little bit of an advantage over 55. You know, it's happening to 55 immediately on the snap. Brisker has the ability to see it. And I suspect that if the quarterback boots out here, very similar to the play uh, that he made on the sack on Daniel Jones, that he's going to have to veer off. And he's the guy responsible for Q, what's called QB contain. So I think he's seeing the ball handed off and then committing and jumping over the tight end. Hopefully me rewinding it back like that multiple times isn't annoying for you guys. If it is, let me know. I feel like this is an extremely high-level play, one of at least five or six that he's made. You guys know what I think of him sacking Daniel Jones, even though somewhat injury-compromised Daniel Jones. And again, um, also his forced fumble, or what I think should be scored a forced fumble, against the 49ers. Here he is as a half-field safety. I actually covered this play in uh, what's called One Play Wednesday. What I do on Wednesdays is I try to cover one play concept from you know three or four different teams or players across the league. And I covered this one because I thought it was unique in the, from the standpoint of how the Bears covered it as the threat shifted. Pre-snap, you've got a bunch formation, and Brisker is the safety opposite that. So you've got three receivers to one side that could run you know, they could run space stuff over here, and you've got to have three or four defenders to be able to – got to have enough defenders, you know, to be able to occupy that space, defend those guys to the bunch side, to the trip side. Well, post-snap, though, watch what happens. First of all, they motion a guy across. The Bears stay in man with the corner, and then Brisker's going to take the motion guy man. you got to mesh with the running back and the quarterback going across – and then the slot tight end, the H-back, he's slipping out into the flats. So what was three by one pre-snap has now changed to three by one over here. And the Bears defense handled it flawlessly. If you didn't watch the One Play Wednesday video, what I talked about is like these guys being connected. We're talking about Jaquan Brisker in this video. So he's basically switched from playing half field safety to now play a man on the receiver who's in motion. Now, he's holding a little bit. Don't get me wrong. It's a third and two. So sometimes on a third down, you're all right with a little bit of a holding penalty if you get away with it because if the guy catches the ball, it's going to be a big gain or a first down at least anyway. In this case, if he holds and it gets called, it's going to be a first down. I understand the mindset, and I, I got no problem with it. I'm a defensive guy. 
you know, could he play it a little better and not be so uh, flat-footed like here and squared up? Yeah. But he doesn't know if he's going to get a vertical or if he's going to get this guy sitting down. What we do know is it's a cool play concept. The Bears defense handled it flawlessly. Jaquan Brisker is a guy who is not just a box safety. Like, I don't know if that's some of the things that are out there, but I suspect because – He's making so many plays in this video from the box. So here's one of him as a half field safety. Certainly looks like because of the width of these safeties, they could be playing like a Tampa two, right? With one Mike linebacker running between the hashes. It's a run play though. So the coverage doesn't necessarily matter. It's a sweep. I think that's Christian Watson, but I could be wrong. Jaquan Brisker is tracking it. Watch him take on this block. I'm going to rewind this a couple of times. Watch how physical he is taking on these blocks. He's committed He's not, he's not just there. You know, we talk about guys making business decisions. It's kind of a weird uh, phrase anyway, but he's committed. He's committed to button heads with this guy and then working through the block, and then he's the guy who ends up making the tackle. He's the guy who keeps playing football right on the sideline. I think that's pretty instructive. I think that's pretty telling. There's only one guy who really finishes this play. It's Jaquan Brisker. He's motivated, uh, driven, whatever you want to call it playing at a much higher level than I would have predicted, to be honest with you. All right, he's the top side safety. Here he is making the tackle right here on Jones, all right, just so you can see it. Now we're going to, want, we're going to pull this back, and I don't know if this player is going to be real smooth on, on rewind. He actually comes from here. That's where Jaquan Brisker lines up. It's a toss play to this side. And a running back cuts it all the way back between the hashes. And Jaquan Brisker's sitting there. So like I said, he's triggered when he needs to be. He's fast flow when he needs to be. Meaning he sees a read and he just goes now. But then there's times where he's he slow plays things because it's the right thing to do. So compare that play with this one. This is Jaquan Brisker. Another run play. The last one I just showed you, he was he slow played it, and he played the cutback, which is what a safety should do in a too-high st safety structure, or the backside safety. Look at this one. Triggered. Gone. Is he looking in the backfield? I don't know. Is he reading, you know, uncovered linemen, which in this case would probably be the guard tackle? I don't know. But in any case, he's triggered. He's gone downhill. He runs into somebody. That's the, the Packers' super huge, humongous tight end. Runs into him, dislodges him gets off, and gets involved in the tackle. I don't know, man. You guys tell me what you see if I'm, if I'm talking, if I'm overrating how high a level he's playing at. I think that uh, Jaquan Brisker is one of those guys that's just playing at an elite level for a rookie. Um, you know, are there mistakes at times? Would you like to see him, you know, be a little bit more on the outside leverage here in terms of his approach because he's got inside out, inside out help? Well, yeah, maybe if you're going to be real picky, you'd like to see him have his helmet on the other side, you know, on here on ta on the tackle, and not sit so much. But you don't, you also don't want him to be hell bent out of control and miss the tackle, and then give this guy a seam to cut it up before that inside help can get there. Inside out help can get there. I think Jaquan Brisker is super aware pre snap. I think he does a great job with his reads. I got two more plays to show you here, illustrations of it. I have no idea if these have been used by the NFL in uh, in play breakdowns by like Baldy or anything on the NFL channel. But all I know is Jaquan Brisker is balling. I would take him on my team. I'm a Ravens fan. You know, I would take him. I think he's he's done more so far than like a guy like Kyle Hamilton has. Has he been on the field more? Well, yes. I think he's played 100% of the snaps through six games. He's got great awareness. The, the video is kind of, you know, blurry from this, uh, this far out because it's the All-22. You know, they're told to zoom out so they can get every player. So uh, that's unfortunate for us. But I think he's looking at the quarterback. And he's tracking the receiver at the same time. Once the ball is thrown to him, he's going to zoom in and try to make the tackle. Two, two more plays, my apologies. I think it goes up to uh, 17. So here is Brisker here. You're going to get this RPO concept by Daniel Jones and the Giants. And he's going to cover the tight end because he understands that this, this DN91 is triggered by the run read. Running back crossing the quarterback's face. He's gonna that DN is gonna go with the running back, which in this case is Barkley. Now they got a three on two. Quarterback out, 
to the edge. You got this guy running a flat, presumably this guy running a snag, or maybe taking it up the hash. And Jaquan Brisker's kind of in no man's land. Well, he can't leave the tight end while Daniel Jones is behind the line of scrimmage. So you let this recovering inside linebacker, which I think is uh, Raquan Smith, I believe, you let this recovering inside linebacker beat a guy to get there, it's still going to be a good gain. It's kind of a cheap play to the boundary, really. Third down play, they're taking advantage of the fact that the nickel defender is set to the field. So numbers-wise, the Giants kind of have an edge. Same play to the boundary. I think later on, watch Brisker. Same exact coverage. He's got the tight end. And when the tackle is missed by Smith, he peels off his man, and now he's got to go tackle Tyrod Taylor, who we know is a great athlete, and he gets in on the tackle. He's an elite player, guys. I think he's very underrated. I don't know if people are talking about him. I really don't watch like sports TV channels and stuff like that. I just I try to intentionally ignore those sources, not because I find them illegitimate, but just because I want my analysis to be based on just the film I'm seeing. So I grabbed 35 or 38 plays, something like that. I cut them down, cut them in half, basically. You, I think you got 17 plays here overall. Let me know what you guys think of the way I broke the film down. Let me know what you think of Jaquan Brisker's play. I think he's playing at a really high level for a rookie. I think he's very versatile. I think he play he slow plays things where he needs to slow play them. And I think I, hopefully I showed you examples of that and explained it well. I think he is triggered, fast read, fast flow, go now, whatever the phrase is you use as a coach or you have been exposed to. He has those reads too. And he's he's expected or asked to execute those reads from play to play because A, he plays 100% of the snaps. B, he lines up in a lot of different places. And they put him in those places, if you ask me, because he's uniquely suited with his explosiveness, with his tackling ability, his recognition, um, and, and his ball skills, even though he hasn't had the chance to, to display those yet in the NFL. Appreciate you guys' time. If you enjoyed the video, please you know let me know in the comment section. And if you're a Bears fan or something like that, let me know how um, accurate my assessment is of Jaquan Brisker. Because again, I only really pulled, I only really downloaded 35, 36, 38 plays, something like that, in order to cut this down. I certainly watched more plays than that. Probably watched about 80 would be my guess. Uh, but And Jaquan Brisker at this point has played 100% of the snaps through six weeks. So there's a significant amount of film out there. Appreciate you guys' time.